Hey, what's up? I'm gonna show you the dumbest thing I've ever made and hopefully teach you something along the way. Today, we're talking about vocal chops and perhaps there's a better term for this, but I'm talking about when you take a vocal take, whether it's spoken word, single line of audio or a melody, and you chop it up into pieces, rearrange it, and use the phonetics included in that phrase to create new context. The source is still recognizable, but you turn it into something new. And today we're gonna to be doing that with spoken word, taken from one of the best YouTube videos of all time. So I'll play you the beat, bring in the vocal chop, play the original sample, and then talk about some of the tips and tricks that you can apply to any DAW, any sampler, but I'm using the OctaTrack today. Hopefully this will inspire some ideas and generate some weirdness. Again, this is idiotic. Rock on. So yeah, I uh, I originally had this this like synth beat here, and I realized I accidentally made Lolly Bella by Caribou off of Swim. Great song. Have been inadvertently listening to a ton of Caribou since. Anyways, that's besides the point. We're here to talk about this stupid vocal, and here's the source content. I have these other devices that I'm really enveloped in, and if something happened to them, I would replace them. So this other workflow, I feel like I've kind of substitute, and that's it. So the main idea here to get you going is really to just take any vocal line, any line of spoken word or potentially a melody, and perhaps we'll get into that later, experiment, or maybe I'll make another video in the future because there are some more intricacies, of course, that come along with structuring and rearranging melody. Kind of a different topic. But here we're just talking about rhythm, right? And the important part is finding phonetics that kind of just speak to you. And you don't know what you're gonna get until you kind of throw everything out on the table. And the best way to do this, in my opinion, is by randomizing things. So the Octatrack has a slice grid, right? And you can slice things up and then place down trigs, assign their length and randomly assign them to different points in the sample. So I did that, right? And I tried a, a few randomizations and then I found that at one point, the word flow landed on the and of the one. Flow. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Flow is a cool word. Flow. So I flow. trig locked flow. that to all of the one ands. I did repitch this. I adjusted the rate and the pitch, and I also actually have an LFO going to the, the the source pitch. So we'll take a look at that in terms of how it affects some of the pickups and little fills. But first, I want to play you this track all by itself, so you can listen in here. So some of that LFO uh, pitch randomization that you're hearing can be heard there, right? So what I've done on some of these trigs is I've assigned a retrig value. So the beat is repeating, but there's also an LFO running in the background. So it's going da 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 and you're getting that pitch modulation, which is super hilarious. And I've, uh, you know, I've locked those to different values. And also, you can probably hear that I have the reverb mix trig locked as well. So there's reverb there. All the flows have reverb. And then there are some trigs without any reverb. And you can do things like splice together. Workflow, uh, which is a word that I probably say way too much on this channel. And also, mm -hmm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you can get these little patches of of silence that can kind of cut samples short. If you have like a reverb tail playing a new sample, we'll cut that off because it's a monophonic track. <laughs> I hate it so much. Sorry if it's confusing having my voice talking over my voice. <laughs> yeah, I love these little these kind of samples of noise and silence. Um, so yeah, keeping that in mind, let's just take a listen again. 
Have the good well, the cat, the cat, the cat, the cat, well, work, 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 well, I'm set. If this seems like totally nonsensical and non musically applicable to you, I want you to check out some tracks like um, Carbonated by Mount Kimby. Um, some of James Blake's old EPs where they're taking like hip hop, R&B, jazz vocal takes and chopping them and creating new melodies and new context and basically just like crafting a beat around those. It's super fun and it can be super musical. And like I've had myself saying work, 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 workflow stuck in my head all week and I feel like I'm going crazy. But yeah, I've created a copy of that pattern and I've cleared all of the trigs out so you can kind of see from scratch how things work. So I have this slice grid here and you can select the amount of slices which will affect the length of each slice so let's go with 16 slices and let's create we're going to do what's called creating linear locks which will basically when we put trigs down since we did 16 it will play the entire sample back sequentially over the course of those evenly spaced 16 locks so you actually have to do the linear locks after you put the trigs down i have these other devices that i'm really enveloped in and if something happened, to them, I would replace them. So this other workflow, I feel like I've kind of substitute. I have these other devices. So if you remember, we still have the pitch modulation because I just copied the pattern and cleared the trigs. We still have that pitch modulation, which I can turn off. I have these other devices that I'm really enveloped in. And if something happened to them, I would replace them. So this, well, I we're just going to play around. That's what we're going to do. We're going to play around with these parameters. And I, I kind of want to show you how I experiment and find new rhythms with this type of workflow. What work, workflow? Kind of substitute. I have these other devices that I'm really involved in. And if something happened to them, I would replace them. So this other workflow. I, 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 Oh, whoa. That's cool. I feel like I heard another like deep swell happen in that sample somewhere. No, it's just that first. That's cool though. So I'm actually gonna create more slices and make them shorter. So this is like how I start, right? Um, I kind of just like find cool rhythms and then I'll listen to <laughs> Oh, there's a cool one. Rhythm. Oh, that's interesting too. <laughs> Why does this keep coming up? <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> Can't escape it. Okay, so <laughs> I had this, this rhythm one. And then don't overwrite step nine on page two, okay? So I'm going to replace some of these trigs with this rhythm, right? Um, I'm going to use it as like a pickup in some instances. And, and I'm going to get rid of some of those because they're just way too goofy. That's kind of a cool hit too. I like that. So let's put that there. 
Ubtub. Really? I like Ubtub. Ubtub. So let's put Ubtub there. And let's play this back and see what we ended up with. Okay, I want it. Yeah, I want some more space. Okay, I don't like where this is going at all, to be honest, so I'm gonna scrap it. But you get the idea, just kind of like playing with sounds and phonetics and rhythms and seeing how they line up and seeing if you can create new phrases and stuff. Um, it's super fun. You could argue that it's a little bit more simple to do with melody actually, because you're kind of stuck in the confines of what sounds good melodically, and then that will guide the phonetics that are being used. Whereas here, you're kind of paying more attention to like the micro enunciations of the words and trying to use that rhythmically and considering how that takes up space within the pattern and interacts with like the actual beat. Either way, it's, a, it's an incredibly fun and inevitably entertaining as hell exercise. And I strongly recommend you just mess around with rhythm and vocals. It's super fun. Fun announcement time. I'm super thrilled to share that my third full length LP titled Cinnamon, is going to be releasing via Mystery Circles on May 2nd. I'm so incredibly excited to be working with Mystery Circles and have learned a lot about ambient music and electronic hardware from the community that they have helped foster. So shout out to David, super stoked to be working with you. And Ash from His Quiet did just an absurdly good job on the art. So I wanna thank them so much for that. It's what you've been looking at on screen. If you've been following the channel, you'll definitely recognize most of the music uh, because most of it is stuff that I've workshopped on the channel. And some of it is just like live performance takes that I've done overdubs and transitions and editing in a DAW. Again, if you like what you've seen on the channel, you're, you're going to like the record. So yeah, definitely head over to my Instagram to keep updated about that. And also check out my Patreon if you haven't already. I have, I have a bunch of fun stuff there. I have a sample pack. I offer lessons, get free album downloads, all that good stuff. Anyways, I want to thank you all so much for hanging as always. And I hope you have a great day. Peace.